Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle in a brief tutorial on the Collateralized Debt Obligation, or CDO, of which there are many variations. So I'll really talk here about the basic version, which is the Balance Sheet CDO. In the Balance Sheet CDO, the motivation typically starts with the originator. Now, because we've read about the CDOs in the financial press a lot lately, we can fairly think of the originator as a bank. Typically the originator is a bank. And the portfolio of assets can be many different assets, but it definitely includes mortgage loans. So if you'd like to re reference this back to recent events, the originator is a bank, and the portfolio of assets could be a portfolio of mortgage loans. The motivation typically is for the bank to remove these loans from its balance sheet. So a special purpose vehicle or entity is created and the loans are sold from the bank to the special purpose entity. So a key part of the CDO that makes the CDO meaningful is that it meets a set of qualifying criteria called a clean break that constitute the true sale of the loans away from the originator and to the special purpose entity. The bank, the sale must meet these criteria in order for the bank, the originator, to remove those loans from its balance sheet. The bank may also, by the way, deposit a cash collateral account. Now, with the help of the underwriters symbolized here, securities are issued to a set of investors. So the investors contribute cash, or they pay the initial purchase price. That's symbolized by the green line. So the investor cash is essentially purchasing the mortgage loans in this case. So the key feature of the CDO is that the portfolio here on the left has been repackaged into a set of securities, but here's the key part. These securities are not all the same. They are tranched into different classes with different risk reward profiles. So it's not just that we've had a credit risk transfer. In other words, a sale of assets away from the originator and a claim on those on those on the cash flow generated by those assets by the investor class. It's not just that. It's additionally that the securities have been tranched into different layers of seniority and subordination. And so the senior tranche is protected by the other tranches. The investors have paid cash in exchange for the promise of principal and interest. So if and when there are defaults on these underlying loans, the first tranches to be adversely impacted to suffer are going to be the equity or residual tranche, also called toxic waste, and the subordinated tranches. They are going to first suffer the principal and interest. So there's a natural hierarchy, sort of a totem pole here, where the senior tranches, because they are protected, have a should have a higher credit quality, a higher credit rating, and therefore a lower yield. Because in order for them to get impacted, the defaults have to really rise up from the bottom here and impact these tranches. As we move down to the subordinated tranches and the equity tranches, they are going to suffer the first defaults, which will manifest with an, adversely, uh, with an adverse hit to the principal and interest cash waterfall. So they're going to have lower credit quality, lower credit rating, but they're going to enjoy a higher yield. You'll note because we're talking about a balance sheet CDO, I've illustrated here what is typical for a balance sheet CDO, and that is that the bank retains or keeps this equity tranche, this junior most tranche, which is an important incentive in the balance sheet CDO because if you think about it, if the originator has to keep this equity tranche, and remember this equity tranche is going to suffer the first defaults, well then that's an important incentive for the bank not to repackage a set of lemon loans because they'll suffer along with the investors. Also another key feature here of these tranche securities 
an important input into the valuation here of the CDO are, is default correlation. Are these assets correlated in terms of their likely default? And this is a hard thing to understand at first, but generally these senior tranche investors would prefer a low default correlation among these assets. And conversely, a low correlation, a low default correlation among the assets is actually going to hurt these subordinated tranches. So those are the essential mechanics of a balance sheet CDO. And I'll summarize, hopefully this is helpful, by going back to the primary motivations. And there are some secondary motivations, but in my opinion there's going to be three primary motivations here. First, removal of the balance sheet. We want an, uh, the, the seeking of an off-balance sheet transaction. Remember we said a bank owns a portfolio of loans and there is a true sale that transfers the loans off the bank's balance sheet. So there can be a motive, even an accounting motive, to remove those loans from the balance sheet. And secondly, of course, there is a transfer of credit risk. In selling these loans, the bank has transferred most of the credit risk that it used to have by virtue of owning the assets to the classes of investors by way of these tranche securities. Notice I said most not all because if they retain the uh, equity tranche then they retain some of the credit risk. But so secondly credit risk transfer is a key motivation. And finally third is simply funding or financing or the raising of cash. The bank not only removes the assets from the balance sheet but it sells them for cash and so it raises cash. There may just be a simple financing motive. So those are my top three in terms of the motivations. So I hope that helps shed some light on the balance sheet collateralized debt obligation. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.